Hey, Sneakless about tonight with the first part, so I'm going to have to do it in parts of Sneaky's Corner. And I have a, quite a lot of questions in for Linux. Why? Well, I wonder why that is. Because it's about Linux, isn't it, basically? So we're going to answer five of them tonight, and then we'll do another five tomorrow, I think. So, anyway, we'll get a bit of the old cheese come up. Okay, you see a bit of me down there. Hello, it's me, thank God, thank you very much. And that's me. And we'll also get a document up. Now I've done a little PDF and put some stuff in here. So the first question is from Econs. Econs, I think it was in New Zealand actually. Right, his question is, where do I see GNU at Linux in the next five to ten years? There's always been questions about what distribution or desktop environment will be a number one, but with projects like Google Chrome OS, we can see GNU Linux being a serious cloud competitor, or can we even? Right, in the next five to ten years, I think we will see us come up into the mainstream. Not number one, not number two, we'll probably be number three, of course, but you'll see a lot more people around the world adopting Linux all around, uh, mainly for cost reasons originally, or to start with, but as they can actually share stuff freely and use stuff freely and have to pay for it and get basically sued, that's a good one for me, don't you think? Well, I think it is anyway. But, you know, 10 years, I would say, because it's a slow-moving thing, Linux at the moment. It's very, very slow-moving. But it's getting better and better every year. Well, I think so. I mean, I've been using it quite a while now, so hey. Yeah, so there he comes. That's that first question answered. Hmm, thank you all very much. I'll just have a little sip of tonight's cider, which is from Dorset and Anglad. Cheers. Thank you very much. So that's that question. Well, the next question here, as you can see, is from Epic Turnip. How long have you been a Linux user? Well, there's two answers to that, really. Full-time Linux. I went full-time Linux in 2000... Where are we going? Bloody hell. Should we say five years ago? went full-time Linux. For certain reasons. I got children. I got fed up repairing their computers, etc., etc. But before that, <clears throat> I used to use a lot of live CDs, basically Nopics, because there weren't that many around them days. But Nopics, like you used to put a CD in, as I've done videos on it before, and it used to do every single thing you wanted to do. And you think, wow, it's, this, you know, there's another route outside of Windows or Mac. Well, I couldn't, wouldn't be that full Mac anyway, but hey, that's that. Anyway, right, that's the second question. <clears throat> third question we have from bloody revolution one never heard of him where are you man i'll have to check him out the best program for linux well, that's a personal thing really isn't it but my best program for linux what i use most and i have mo most fun with and i can relax with and i can just like just go in for hours and hours using it without any like, doing anything else i'll show you it shall i show you yeah i'll show you it so i'll go up here I'll go to the sound and video, and here it is. My favourite, this is what I would say the best programme for me, for other users it would be different, it would be Mix. So I'll bring Mix up, <clears throat> eventually, when it decides to do what it's got to do. But yeah, we'll come up in a second. There you go, Mix, there's Mix. As you can see, I've got all my tracks in there, I can mix and do stuff happily for hours on end, make my own mix stuff. I like doing it. It's relaxing, well, I find it relaxing. You may think it's a load of rubbish. But it's probably one of the best ones out there. It's cross-platform as well for Windows, Mac, and Linux. You don't even have to build it anymore for Linux. It's all in your repos now. And then the latest one is Super Bloody Bleeding Duper. So yeah, that is my best program for Linux. There are a lot more, but it's up to you. What is your best one? It's personal choice, really. At the end of the day, isn't it? So anyway, <clears throat> bloody, we're going through this quick, aren't we? Ten more questions in. I've only got about fifty so far. So, next question would be, it's two questions. Oh, he's been greedy. Uh, I wonder where he's from being greedy. And it's from Restman79. His first bit is, what would your non-Ubuntu-based newbie distro be of choice? Now, that's quite a difficult one. If you're a newbie and you want to use Linux and you don't want to use Ubuntu, or is it? 
Well, you've got several choices. You can't use mint, obviously. It's Bantu based. So if anybody says that, because people do come and say that and you have to enlighten them as enlightenment. Personally, I would say a Puppy Linux or PC Linux OS. Now, PC Linux OS is quite good. You can get any desktop you want, even E17, one of my faves. All the drivers are in there, all the drivers for the graphics and your wireless are normally in the box, which is what you really want, isn't it? And it works out of the box. Personally, I would go for Puppy Linux. Yes, I know it's not so well supported in the driver section, but if you've got a little bit older hardware, say two, three, four years even, maybe a bit older, it'll run, it'll run your wireless drivers, your desktop will be done. I know that we're having a bit of trouble at the moment, or I have on some of the machines, the other machines in my house doing flash certain flash sites uh, bbc iplayer is fine and youtube is normally fine but you go to some others they don't want to work okay so the second part of his thing is or his question of all the distros you've tested or use which one is the most deserving of increased exposure adoption by the linux community and under the radar gem if you will thanks for the videos thank you mate same to you so we say okay I would say Tiny Core. Now, I know it's not a newbie newbie distro. You, if you're not into Linux at all, you just won't get it. But it runs from the live CD. You can make it run with a save file, which is even better. Which I like, I like doing it under save file because it's easier to do sometimes. Excuse me. Mm. Very appley. Mm. Wonder why it's cider. So, anyway, yes, I would say Tiny Core because basically you get the basics. As long as you can connect to the net via Ethernet cable to start with. You're up and ready to go. Yes, you have to install your own browser. Yes, you have to install all your own sound stuff. But it works really fast. And for 10 megabyte download, I like it. Now, some people will say, oh, no, I don't like that. Slitez is the better one, or Slitez, or whatever you want to call it. That's where you come from, really. But I would say Tiny Core, in my opinion, is the one to go for. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you do. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, another thing about Tiny Core is you can have LXD, you can have GNOME. I'm a bit of trouble with GNOME, though, I must admit. But LXD, XFC, all the desktops, it's fine to download. Yes, I know the install is a bit of a pain up the back side and, you know, gets on your breasticles, but it can be done. If you don't want to go through the install, just do a save file or do a USB install. All done, no worries. I hope that answered them questions for you, mate. Yes. So, anyway. Last one I'm going to do, well, might be the last one. He has a question, and it's from Crazy UK Dude. Man, ladies. I have a question regarding Linux and gaming. I've always wondered why, if Linux is open source, and there are so many clever minded people out there creating things for it and making stuff work properly, why is it taking so long to make Windows games work? For the simple reason, they're made for Windows at the end of the day, and you can't make an emulator. You can use Wine, but that Wine is not an emulator. That's, that's what it means, Wine. It's not an emulator. It just has to make layers to try and read the code, and as it's closed source, Windows, did you know that? Windows is closed source. You just have to guess sometimes, because they have to just go along as they go, basically, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's people who make the games that should make them cross-platform, not just make them for just one system, say Mac or Linux or Windows or whatever you were talking about, really. If they made them for all three or all four or all ten or whatever, everybody really happy and you could decide on what sort of thing you can use. But yeah, that's a really simple answer to that one. That, I'll go on for hours about that one, but I'm not going to. It's just quite a short video, so I'm not going to do that one. So Crazy Dude UK or Crazy UK Dude... I'll get back to you on that one. We might do you again sometime at a later date. Now, the final one is from Fighter Pilot 1992. Top hole, top hat. Hmm, can I eat Linux? Well, apparently, there was a bar of chocolate many moons ago called Linux. Um, I can't remember where I've seen it or where the picture was from. And there was a Tux Cola a while ago. Is that still around? I don't know. It might be. So, yeah, you can actually eat and drink it if you really wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. So that's the first few questions I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to do some more tomorrow, and you can see this in a bit. Sneaky Linux is going... Oh, hang on. Sneaky Linux. Ah, going out and doing some stuff. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.